where to find it. They crash before I get a, a, a photo. I don't even get a shot of my... You're gonna get a chemical burn in, a, in the spiral perm. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I think that's what we calculated for was 420. What the fuck? This is the car, this is the track, and this is Gronk, baby. What are you doing? Are you serious? I don't wanna work with him no more. Why, why is he here? You're mentally imbalanced. This nut right here that broke it. You know how hard it is to get them brown Legos? Let's hop into the first race here at the Red Bull Ring, and we are starting in P8 behind Xavier. I really don't even want to attempt that name. Half a second off of the top, guys, and we have 16 laps to do something about it. So, uh, yeah, let's get straight into it. Grandpa launching this one. I know, hate me, don't hate me. I promise I figured it out. I know I always say that, but we are going to lose a position just about. He's ahead of us. He's on the outside, so we do have the inside. If he has a good run, he should be able to maintain that position here. Gets a little bit of, like, snap oversteer for just a second, and that's going to kind of even out our runs, even though he really should have had a better run around the outside. But I do have the slipstream for a second before the car ahead moves over to the left side which is going to really force a two wide situation here into turn three on lap one here we go side by side once again he's looking for the outside we're following him as tightly as we can we do make contact our butt hits his front right tire here's a different view of that there is somebody off the side of the track just ignore that and yeah we kind of i mean we kind of shaft him out of the way but from my view i mean i think there was space out there still for him to use so uh, i don't know you can make your own decision on that but we maintain our position he tucks in right behind us as we head towards corner number four he's not quite close enough to look for a move he's just showing in our mirrors a little bit following xavier as as a rick a Xavier Asericopy, number two, so believe it or not, there's two people with that name, or this is his Smurf account, not quite sure. As we head towards the final corner, he is going to get an off track there. I don't know if you saw that, but he did drift a slightly wide. I'm paying attention to that. He then has a horrible run through the final corner, which gives us kind of puts us in a weird situation because like I said before I don't like to make this move but there's somebody right behind me so if I tuck in behind Xavier this guy is just going to go around me so I kind of have to attack Xavier uh, more as a defensive tactic from car number 10. I do end up tucking behind and thankfully the car behind does the same thing so we all go through there just fine. I shouldn't be under too much pressure as I do have the slipstream from Xavier and he's kind of holding on to the slip from the cars ahead but they are starting to pull away from us and they set really good lap times uh, for qualifying so there's a good chance that they kind of run away. I'm really hoping that we can stay attached. We do get a really good run through there, which kind of separates us from the cars behind, which is fantastic. They're now about a second back there, so slightly out of our mind at this point. Sitting in the back of our mind, but enough of a gap that, uh, I, I mean, I could start to attack if I wanted to. And that gap is going to grow as car number 18 dives up the inside of car number 10 into corner number 4. 10 kind of forced to settle behind and almost, I mean, he's under pressure from losing another position now. As 15 swings around the inside, gets a superior run, and heading into Power Horse, they're going to be too wide. This could go either way. It really tends to get settled into the next corner. However, car number 10 going to power out early, make contact, and that's going to unsettle his car, but he's not giving up ends up going a little bit deep into the downhill left-hander and look at the evasion skills from this guy i think this is car number 12 he does end up in the wall but like huge shout out to avoiding that whole accident and avoiding making it worse something i and probably everybody else needs to take notes from lap number three still following xavier we have almost two seconds to jowl behind us so the pressure is completely vanished from back there and this is gonna kind of start to be my downfall as i'm about half of a second heading into corner number three completely miss the apex go extremely deep do everything in my power to not get an off track even though had I just accepted that off track I probably would have kept some time I end up losing over a second as we head into corner number four where once again we're going to break slightly late here go a bit deep we managed to kind of salvage our exit but do lose about two tenths there which is going to completely remove us from the slipstream sadly and those guys were hauling ass however I'm going to get really lucky because by the time lap number eight comes around we have put in some decent laps and Xavier has slowly fallen off of that group ahead on top of it he's going to go wide into turn three here which is huge for me and what that does is number one it begins to put me more towards the slipstream but more importantly it takes Xavier out of the slipstream of the guys ahead which will give should give me an advantage 
until I catch up to him and hopefully get past him and then the advantage kind of gets tossed back and forth. I mean, that's kind of what racing is. Through the last corner, we have closed the gap uh, about, by about half of a second at this lap alone, so got it down to a second. We're in the slipstream. Lap number 11 comes out. You can see he is significantly behind the cars ahead by almost three sec or th over three seconds, and I am just about in prime time for the slipstream. Six tenths behind him, get a good run through that first corner. Super important to do that. The slipstream will not make up for a bad run unless you're literally like sucking on their exhaust pipes and uh, we're not doing that. So the gap is closing down to about three tenths by the time we get into corner number three. Really wanna focus on the exit here, turn in a little bit later than you would think and you can build up the throttle super fast on exit. I get a little bit of wheel spin there so that nullifies what could have been a really decent run and we're just gonna remain on his tail, hang behind him for a little bit. We have five more laps to go to get something done so there's no major rush I mean honestly Xavier is pretty fast he's about the same pace as us so if we were to get this position done too early I mean it could ensue a lot of fighting and the car behind Andre Fernandez he's only four seconds behind which seems like a lot but if you're like switching positions fighting too wide through corners three four five six seven eight all the way up until nine where you actually can go too wide all of the way through uh, I mean that'll lose you probably around two seconds at least a lap and so I, I want to minimize that and try and time this correctly. Three tenths behind him as we cross the line onto lap number 12. Doesn't get better than this in terms of slipstream and opening up an opportunity into corner number three. So if we nail this exit, that should present itself to us. Really good run through here for us. He has not the greatest, far superior for us. Absolutely going to be a good attempt here. Get right up behind him, move to the outside as he's holding the inside to, to defend this line. Can go either way around here. You really have to focus on the exit as the outside car. We make a little bit of contact as we enter into the braking zone, which scares me slightly. And I go from looking for a better exit uh, around the outside to looking for a switchback. End up over slowing the car there. It was a viable strategy, I think, but it went south for me. And then this goes even more south as I try to show in his mirrors and really just end up throwing my own line off as he is completely unfazed. I mean, honestly, he probably wasn't looking in his mirrors at that point. He was probably looking at the road. So uh, we fall back off of him. Lap number 14 it comes around. That gap is still there. However, we are running out of time once again. I mean, we're one tenth behind him into corner number one. The car behind still four seconds behind. So he's not really catching at this point, uh, but we do have to be smart about where we try to make a move. He got a really good run through the first corner there. It's, it's not going to make up uh, the difference between the slipstream that I have. You can see me closing the gap rampantly. Once again, around the outside, going to look for it. And I want to look to go all of the way around the outside and hold him tight. Just about going to manage it, keeping my nose in line with his rear tires. He can't move over. He can't open that up. He's going to hug the inside extremely tight here. And I trust him to not go super deep, so I'm not going to look for a switch back. I Instead, I want to go around the outside, breaking slightly later than I normally would. To go around the outside, you have to hold them a little tight here, which I'm not going to do. I'm going to go super deep, um, which is at least going to allow me to have a good exit. Uh, I, th I think that was mainly just him over slowing right there and slightly ahead heading into power horse. We have the inside. This could go either way. Just a little bit of contact as we come through here, but I'm going to maintain my position. This is where it gets dangerous through the downhill left hander and he's around the outside. I give him way too much space on the exit. He's able to build up his throttle. I'd say around a quarter of a second earlier than I am. That's going to give him a better run. He actually moves ahead of us before the penultimate corner. We tuck to the inside. I don't know what my objective was there. I, I needed to really ship it if I was going to make that work. Instead, I lose time. I drive off track there. And uh, I mean, yeah, I come across with a pretty poor run, about four tenths behind him. And that gap would remain up until, well, it, it says final lap, but this is really the last corner of the penultimate lap. So we're heading towards the final lap at the moment. That gap, about two tenths. You can see Andre behind has actually caught us by a decent margin. Now within three seconds. And I'm about to just... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'll just let you watch this one. Yeah. Rookie. Rookie mistake. You can see me steer and slam on the throttle mid-corner. Uh, that is a sure way to spin your car. And there we go. We're going to lose a position to Andre, who has been hunting us down this entire race. Props to him for continuing to drive a super solid race, even when it didn't look like there was an opportunity for a position. Crossing the line in P9, and that would conclude our... This was actually our, I think this was our penultimate race. Uh, I know a lot of you guys have been mentioning in the comments that I use that word a lot, but I absolutely love that word. It makes me feel so smart. Here are the results. Finishing that one in P9, a little bit disappointing. Not losing any I rating though, which is the least I could have asked for. To be P9, you probably should lose I rating. 
Using a bit of safety rating, that's nothing new to me. I'm so used to having like almost no safety rating. Next race, this is actually the last race of the season. This was a couple of races later, I think. This, either way, this was our last race of the season. 32.2, terrible time. Joey and William Sapstead, huge shout out to William. Uh, super, super fun guy to race with. Look at this, we do a real start, boys. We actually started the car correctly felt great uh still going to go side by side as it i mean it wasn't optimal but it was still the correct technique even if it wasn't totally even if i didn't do it like to the maximum ability of uh opportunity that it could have been done to i still did it it's like it's like when you're learning something right you don't have to be amazing at it you just do it and you'll get better at it with each time staying a little bit on the inside they're taking a semi-defensive line as car number 11 behind us was still well he was in range to send a dive Joey maintaining P2. We got Will Robinson ahead of us in P3, and we are just kind of cruising around in P4. Already a second, uh, almost two seconds off of William, and Joey is about a second off of William, but not to fear because I promise this race is going to, I mean, things will, you can't see I'm doing something with my hands, but this race is gonna, um, like, it's like when stuff squishes together, it's gonna compress. So, yeah, it looks kind of spread out right now, but Joey, thank God for Joey. He is going to reel in William. Through those last couple of corners there, he brings him down by like four tenths. And had we not had Joey here to extend the slipstream of William, like Joey is staying in the slipstream of William and passing it on to currently Will Robinson behind, uh, that is going to keep us all connected, thank God. Because I was having a lot of like little moments that would put me a couple of tenths off. You can see I'm eight tenths as we head into corner number four. Will is going to go very deep here, cut back to salvage his exit, but definitely lose a little bit of time to us. And heading into Power Horse here, it's going to unfold for him quite a bit, as I think he breaks probably slightly too late. He's shipping it through, trying to get the angle still, and yeah, asking that much of the car. Through that corner, it's kind of off-cambered. It's very a very long and light braking zone. Look at how close Joey is to Will up ahead. We move up into P3. We have a little bit of a ways to go between myself and Joey, but Joey is so close to Will that I feel like a lot of times when people are this close, they start to run slightly slower lap times. Like if there's about three tenths, three tenths, four tenths between the cars, they run faster. And you can see Joey almost goes into the back of him, which is going to make him fall back slightly. He still manages to avoid the off track, avoid the slowdown, but that will put us in the slipstream now. Thankfully, thank you, Joey, uh, as we cross on to lap number three. So we are into the slipstream now, actually more of Joey than Joey is of William, going to try and use that to our advantage to catch up probably both of us to William. I assume, I mean, William has no slipstream, so realistically, me and Joey should kind of match speeds and catch William together. That does begin to happen as we move on to lap four about halfway through, coming out of corner number four, and we're about four tenths off of Joey. Joey's about three tenths off of William, and he's heading towards that first corner, which super long straight after he's two tenths now he's got a fantastic run uh i will say the thing that held joey back and i actually talked to him about this was that he wasn't super confident in his run through corner number one but i can tell you from experience uh, and driving behind him that he was fast through every other corner extremely fast and this helped me out a lot because i felt fast through corner number one so it allowed me to stay attached despite my lack of pace basically everywhere else in the track however joey is being activated by the slipstream here slinging up the inside of corner number three and attacking William on lap number five for the lead of the race. Big moment for Joey as he slides off to the right and F's in the chat for Joey. I'm alive! Never mind, yeah, he's fine. I don't know how he saved that, but he saved it somehow. And William is not having it with Joey right now. Uh, being good racing, he's holding him tight here. Moves to the outside just about. I almost make it three wide. Joey moves over. We're super close heading into corner number four. And Joey opened up that exit just enough. I mean, he was damn near, like glued to the car of William gets a really good run through there and he's going to take the lead of the race already an extremely eventful race so far and a lot more of it to go we're only five laps and we have 11 laps excluding this one to wait 11 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16, 11 laps to go excluding this one so Quite a lot of race left. I mean, 11 laps is what? It's like 20 something minutes. Lap number six comes around and we're staying where we're at. We have completely gapped the cars behind really by virtue of me just getting to be towed along in my favorite place, which is just watching these guys from right behind. Mason Wyshawowski behind us, six seconds behind us. Looks like he may be involved with a battle with uh, Dennis. And 
Like I said, I love sitting right behind two people battling. William looking up the inside of corner number three. I'm getting a front row seat to everything. They go side by side through it as, uh, I mean, he gains time through the mid corner, obviously. Joey gets a better run because he goes around the outside and is able to open up his steering better. So he's going to move slightly ahead by the time we move into corner number four. It's not much, but it is a little tiny advantage that helps quite a lot when you're going around corner number four. If you're on the outside, you need to be ahead. It's not quite going to be enough in this case. Joey's going to slot behind and move all of the way over, possibly looking to attack around the outside of Power Horse, and sure enough, he is. Does that open up the outside for us? Possibly, and never mind, because Joey looks to make a switch back and instead just runs into William. Uh, no real damage done there. I don't think there was even a dent put in either of their cars, so we remain I mean, within like, what, three, four tenths of each other all of the way through. Pretty crazy thing to see. Six laps into a race. At least for me, this was my first time uh, being this close to the battle for the lead this week. And good timing, too, because this was my final race of the week. So I really was looking forward to it just being a lot of fun. And, I mean, we did this race at like 3 a.m. in the morning for me in California. It was a fantastic way to to end the night. I hope that doesn't spoil the way this goes. I don't think it does. Joey peeking up the inside right there, just showing in the mirrors of William and still getting a really good run for such a violent maneuver just before the breaking zone. We're going to remain behind him all of the way up until, I mean, we're still behind him, but he is looking to go around the inside of William, make slight contact on the exit as he tries to open up his steering. That's going to unsettle his car. They switch places ahead of us, and Joey tucks back behind him on the inside to soak up that slipstream, possibly get a run here and look around the outside. William starts to move to the outside. Joey could look up the inside. Short enough, he is. Is he breaking late enough to find himself alongside? Not quite. William stays ahead. Good defending from him, and for how much move that was. I mean, it was a lot of movement from everybody for a whole lot of nothing to actually happen right there. Half a second off of the lead of the race still. Joey is continuing to put pressure. He never, never relents his pressure right on the tail of William. And I'm really just hoping at this point that this fighting will continue and open up an opportunity for me at some point. It's been a lot of side by side from them. And I figured at some point it had to happen. Joey perhaps could send a move as we near the end of the race and he gets impatient or William makes a mistake and collects Joey. That would also be a uh, I mean, that would be even better as it would remove both of them from even being able to attack me. Uh, these are all hypotheticals. Let's pay attention to what is actually happening. And on board with William, we are going to see the biggest shift in the race as going through the downhill left-hander. He gets his tire on the curb. It can be dangerous. And here it, it is. He's going to spin his wheels, go around. Joey manages to avoid him. I follow Joey through. And William honestly saves that fantastically, like for how badly that could have gone for him. He only ends up losing probably two seconds there, if even that. He's a second behind us currently. Uh, we're right behind Joey, just about losing it as we go through the penultimate corner, and through the final one, we're going to stay perfectly in the slipstream of Joey. William actually losing a little bit more time as it takes you a little bit to get back up to speed, a few corners at the very least, to uh, kind of regain your car, realize the situation you're in, and uh, set, settle back into the rhythm. Really good run for us as we come around lap number 14. Not many laps left at this point. Looking around the outside into corner number three, Joey moves to defend it, and it's definitely a move that is possible. Not on this occasion as I get a massive slide and just slam on the power for whatever reason. There was probably a better way for me to save this. Uh, that definitely overheated my tires to some extent and is going to begin to allow William back into the race. He's now half of a second behind us. We know that he has pace. He currently has the fastest lap of the race. And this now puts us in a position to where, like, obviously we want to attack for the lead of the race, but we have to do it in a smart way because if we mess up, we're losing a position. And uh, on top of that, we have to find a way to attack while still being attacked by William. And I mean, we're not actually being attacked by him yet. He's just kind of lurking behind, but he does have the slipstream. I do think that he was faster around this track than me. So it's, it's, I feel like he's going to catch me basically is what I'm saying here. And I'm just trying to possibly get around Joey before that happens. If that doesn't happen, I have to be ready to simultaneously defend and attack at the same time, or possibly just defend and hold my position where I'm at because we're crossing on to the penultimate lap right here, lap number 15 out of 16, and we're all kind of, I mean, I'm definitely closer to Joey than William is to me. However, that could actually cause problems for me because if I'm kind of forced to attack here, I mean, I could try and push Joey, but even if I did that, there's a possibility that we both lose time as we kind of have to navigate 
being super close to each other through corner number three. Joey's going to hug the inside, so he is not looking for that push. I'm going to move around the outside, and we're going to attack him once again around the outside of corner number three. Going deeper this time, really focusing on getting the car turned and then getting that power down as, as straight of a line as we can. Hopping on board with William. We are side by side. We're slightly behind Joey, but we did get a better run as we went around the outside, so we're slowly going to kind of catch up and hopefully move just a little bit ahead of him into corner number four. Break as late as we can here and try and keep the car on track. Turn in slightly too late, possibly, as Joey gets the power down and moves ahead of us. William now finds himself alongside the inside of us, so we're going to be defending William into power horse. Never mind, we almost kill him. Not quite sure what happened there. I think William just didn't see me and was trying to move into that space on the left side of Joey there and didn't realize I was there. We make contact, massive save, super quick reactions from William. Nobody dies there. However, from that contact, we did lose a little bit of time to Joey. So we now find ourselves about half of a second behind Joey. We only have one lap left to go, but on the bright side, uh, like I said, the last lap, what this gap means is that it's big enough of a gap that we have the slipstream of Joey. William has the slipstream of us, uh, and we have so much space between ourselves and Joey that we won't be forced to attack him, so we should be able to defend uh, William just by virtue of kind of the pace we get from sitting in the slipstream, and hopefully that is enough to keep William off of us. Crossing onto the final lap, and I'm not going to lie, I was slightly more worried about defending uh, than attacking Joey because I think William is faster than me, so... I figured that that was going to condense a little bit. We get a good run through there. Like I said, we have the slipstream and enough space that we won't be impeded uh, by Joey, basically, because he doesn't have the slipstream, so we should be faster than him down the straight, but have just enough space that uh, we're, yeah, we're not going to be, we're able to take our full racing line, basically, is what I'm trying to say here. I don't know if that point has come across. I've said it like 10 times. I'm just not good at vocalizing it uh, right now. Four tenths between the three of us, and that gap is going to remain all of the way until the final corner where I just need to not bottle it, not get a slowdown, and in true pole racing fashion, going to just about cut the track there. I actually managed to stay off of it and not get a slowdown, though, so we do get P2. Super close call right there at the end extremely extremely fun race probably my most enjoyable this week we all three pull up here and to celebrate the pole racing one two joey and myself begin to just kind of slam onto our throttle and do some drifts william sees this and gets out of harm's way asap now we did have like I think we only had like two or three incident points, so all of that nonsense at the end didn't really hurt us. Gaining 48 I rating, both of us actually, with the pole racing 1-2, as Joey is a substantially higher rated than us at the moment. 0 0.06 safety rating, thank the fucking lord. We were 1.04 before this race, and Nordschleife is next week. Here are the lap times. William obviously was faster than us. I think definitely the faster driver there, but this just goes to show that sometimes you don't need to be the faster driver to uh, finish ahead of somebody who's faster than you. If you guys enjoy this video and want to support me, please check out some of my other videos in my channel, and I bet you'll find something there that you enjoy as well.